again, and thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Carly Boyette. In this episode of Good News on Entertainment, we will be highlighting three different films. The first one is coming to theaters January 26th. As most of you know, Left Behind is a multimedia franchise that started with the series of best-selling books in the 90s and then later turned into a film series. Well, the film series is back, along with other notable actors, Left Behind, Rise of the Antichrist, stars Kevin Sorbo. Here's a sneak peek of the film before my conversation with Kevin, who, by the way, also directs the film, too. If someone had told me that millions of people were just going to disappear, I, like you, would have said they were crazy. Was it the rapture? I saw it happen. The world is suffering. We are on the brink of mass insanity. What happens to the rest of us? Doesn't it seem strange that it's still so easy to dismiss it? even though we saw it with our own eyes. Kevin Sorbo, such an honor to talk with you today. How are you doing? I'm doing just great. Thank you so much. I got my workout in today, and I'm ready to kind of hit the rest of the day doing a lot of interviews, and you're the first one of the day. So. Oh, well, it is uh, a, a, certainly a pleasure to get to talk with you. Uh, confession, I'm going to start with this, Kevin, on a confession. Sure. I have actually, but it's a compliment, I have not seen the other Left Behind series um, shows and content and everything. I didn't even see the other movie that came out a couple of years ago. So I'm like coming in it brand new and I love it. It stands alone. I don't think you need to see the other ones. Is that the intent, Kevin? Well, well, I don't know if that was the intent, but we certainly hope that people were more interested in this one because uh, it does deal with after six months after the rapture has taken place. And it feels like it, it's happened on Earth already with all the anger and hatred and violence. And it feels it feels like things are are building up to that point. And uh, you know, we made it very modern day. We actually refer to the pandemic. We actually I was going to ask that. You oh got yeah, that yeah. So they 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 did a total rewrite on this one. The last one actually was eight years ago when it came out. Nicholas Cage starred in it as Rayford Steele. I took over that role. I also directed at this one as as, as well. Um, but we got a very nice um, email from uh, Jerry Jenkins, who was the half the writers on the uh, Left Behind books, which sold 80 million copies. Because Tim LaHaye has passed away mm -hmm. since then. But um, Jerry said this is easily the best one that they've ever he's ever seen made from the book. So that's quite an honor to come in from him. Yeah. Uh, what is the message? I mean, it's I'll be honest. I feel like when you look at the book of Revelation, it is a scary Sure. venture to try to embark and understand. And I can't imagine what that was like for Jerry trying to put that in writing and then now to put it yeah. you know, on film as well, which they've done in the past, of course. Um, but what is the message? Because the, you know, the message of the Bible and the, the message eventually of Revelation is hope. But this movie sure. is darker, I think. I mean, I think you have to yep. go down some of those dark roads. What are you hoping that people really understand, both as believers and non-believers? Well, you know, here's the interesting thing, because I've talked to plenty of people, you know, or churchgoers, and I say, hey, do you ever invite in your friends to church? And they go, no, nah, I don't do it. They, they always go, ah, oh, there's church people there. I don't want to go. Yeah. But I tell you, you can always invite them to a movie. They'll go to see a movie with you. Mm -hmm. So this is a type of movie that, and that certainly happened when we did movies like uh, God's Not Dead and Let There Be Light and Soul Surfer and things like that, where people came out of all faiths, non-faiths. I mean, but I, I yeah. call every movie a faith movie, really, because or faith-based, because even atheism is a faith. I mean, to believe in absolutely nothing, that's that's incredible yeah. to me. It's unfortunate because there is no hope in these people's lives. But I'm hoping a movie like this will, will motivate people. And, and I hope they go read the Bible. I hope they read the book of Revelation. Yeah. Because as my pastor said, he said, read the book of Revelation. It'll scare the hell out of you. you know? So <laughs> um, I, uh, I always, when I first read it as a 12-year-old kid, I was like, oh, my gosh, it freaked me out. Then as I've read it, as I've gotten older and had a more mature look at it, um, it's incredible. It's an amazing book. And I don't think Hollywood could even with all the visual effects could really do it justice because yeah. it's, it's unbelievable to think of all these things happening. I'd love somebody to give it a good shot though, and, and get it out there. But, um, you know, I'm hoping that people will go see this movie with friends and fill up the theaters. I mean, so far I'm hearing great news about it. We start January 26th. So people know, please go to leftbehindmovie.com. That's the site left behind movie.com it shows you the trailer shows you what theater it's showing near you we're up to 1500 screens which i think is fantastic for an independent movie like this and i hope people get motivated to uh maybe take a look at their lives and look at the world and the direction it's going with our politicians not just in america around the world you see the craziness of out there and you know and 
you know, this really kind of shows, um, you know, we, we, we give, a, give a peek into the, what the Revelation talks about with this leader that comes out that is so charismatic and uh, he just brings people into him. But he's, he's, got the, he's got a plan that is the opposite of God's. Let me just put it mm-hmm. that way. God wins in the end, though. We know that. You know how it ends. This is true. <laughs> hey, I wanted to, to, one of my favorite scenes uh, in the film is when you were talking with a, a woman who admits that she's, you know, she's like, I want to believe, but she still has doubts. And I think so many people can relate to that because it's like they almost get there. They almost mm-hmm. understand the cross and what it means, but there's still all this doubt that's going, I don't know, is it real? And I love the answer that you give in this film. I hate to give it away, but I do want you to touch on that because, again, it's just so relatable. And I think so many people struggle with that. Well, the woman you mentioned in that scene happens to be my real life wife. (laughs) (laughs) We we, we try to work together when we can. And uh, I I said, look, we got a part in here that I would love you to play because there's a wonderful scene in there. I didn't know how that scene was going to turn out emotionally for her and for me. Um, it's a very emotional scene and it's just, that's why I love that as an actress, sometimes something happens we're on a set where you know that it, the scene has a lot into it, but it, you don't know, sometimes it just affects you by just working the, off the person opposite you. And it really deals with, she comes in, you know, sort of interrupt. I'm sort of in the church getting things put together. We're trying mm-hmm. to put together a group of people to come in, uh, to, you know, that are, they're searching for answers because it's six months after the rapture and every Christian on the earth has disappeared and people are going to come up with their own reasons. They always had aliens mm-hmm. or whatever it may be. But um, it, it, I love this scene because I have that picture that I reference in that scene as a kid growing up, my mom had that in my bedroom. And it's a picture of Jesus, very famous painting of him knocking on a door. And it's very late in the evening or just it's dusk. The lighting is very moody and very drastic. And um, it, there's no door handle on Jesus' side because you're the one who has to open the door mm-hmm. to have Jesus come into your life. So it's a very touching scene. It's a very emotional mm-hmm. scene. And uh, I, I'm glad it's, uh, it turned out better than I thought it was going to turn out. And <laughs> I, hate to put, I hate to put one of the favorite scenes in the movie is one that I was in, but it's not always that way. But Well, it's just so powerful. Happened. Like I said, I think so many people relate and struggle with sure. that. On And even believers, I think sometimes we go through phases of, wait a minute, you know, do I yeah. still believe or... You know, but the other thing I wanted to ask you, my passion right now is really finding out. I know you guys are parents as well. um, And it's this idea of, you know, I want my kids to believe because they believe and that God has been real to them, not because they've seen it played out in other people or, you know, they've seen other people's strong faith. What was that moment for you? And certainly because it's in, you know, it, it set you on a path now to really be bold in your faith. But what is that? Do you have a moment that you can share where you said, you know what, this is why I know God is real. And this is why I am so bold about my faith. And I want others to know. Well, I grew up I grew up in a very Christian family. My mom and dad, we were staunch uh, Lutherans. I am Scandinavian boy. I'm my second generation from Norway and grew up in Minnesota. And uh, St. John's Lutheran Church was our church. Mm -hmm. And Wednesdays uh, were very important to me as a teenager. We had a place called The Room. And it was our it was our youth pastor, Pastor Lee. And they had bean bags and, you know, beat up couches. And we'd sit around and read from the Bible and talk and talk about life. It wasn't all just, you know, everything related to what it ultimately related to the Bible and to God and Jesus. But really it was like he was there to sort of be this cool voice to us. But there was a trip we took when I was 13 years old, um, our church. We took eight buses to, into the St. Paul Fairgrounds. It was a hot August night there in Minnesota. And yes, Minnesota, we do get very hot in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't have penguins as, as pets. Um, but uh, uh, we went to see the Reverend Billy Graham speak. Mm. And there was outside, it was 250 to 300,000 people. It was massive. I've never seen so many people in one spot. And I was motivated to go up to speak with one of those volunteers after he finished when he said, please come up if you want to pray, talk, whatever. Mm. And something I normally wouldn't have done, certainly as a 13 year old. And I just walked up there on my own. I said, I got to do this. And I was sitting on the grass talking to this guy. He was probably 30, 31 years old. So he's a really old guy to my 13-year-old, you know, and which I'd love to be 30 again. But anyway, um, I remember um, just we weren't praying or anything. We were just talking, you know, who was, where, you know, where I was from and where my, you know, I was in the sports. We're just, we're just having a conversation. He was making it very easy for me to sort of kind of be there. And all of a sudden, a hand went on my head. I turned around. And it was Reverend Billy Grant. And his head was, he had his bodyguards with him, of course, because, yeah, he has to. Yeah. And he had this, his head was perfectly blocking the moon. You could just see the outs, just these 
these these lights coming out of his head. And I get goosebumps telling that story. And I told that story in Larry King. And um, I got a call from Larry Ross, and Larry Ross runs the publicity for the uh, Billy Graham Foundation. And he said, hey, look, um, we saw this interview, and the Reverend Billy Graham loved it, and he got a big kick out of it. And he said he would love you to write a chapter for the Chicken Soup for the Bowl, 100 uh, book, 101 stories of people that have met or have been touched by you know him in some way. So I wrote the story, and it's the only time they ever did a hardcover book for Chicken Soup for the Soul was for Billy Graham. And I got called like a few months later when the book was finished, and they said the Reverend would love it. You know, he can't get around in his 90s now. He's, he's pretty much at home, but he would love it if you could uh, do the publicity for him. He's a big fan of what you've been doing. And I was like, wow. Uh, yeah. So I traveled around and did all these talk shows promoting the book. It was quite an honor. But um, I think that 13 years old, I never stopped believing. I never had a mm-hmm. moment, wow, there can't be a God. I mean, every time, all I got to do is wait for nighttime and look up at the stars and mm-hmm. our, our our galaxy in the universe and go, well, uh, it, you can't get nothing from some, from, you can't get something from nothing. And so somebody started this and it wasn't you and it wasn't me. So uh, it, it had to be started by a supreme deity that, that just w- w- hope that one day we will meet. It's always going to wrap our minds and make us go crazy trying to think the chicken or the egg, which came first. But I'll yeah. tell you, something started this and it wasn't me. What advice do you have for others, again, who may be struggling, you know, of, of saying, I mean, what would be your advice on, on, maybe when they're looking for truth, because that's the theme of the movie. I think that's mm-hmm. a theme of what we've lived. Certainly the last couple of years, um, you know, that's heightened more than ever is looking for truth and wanting to know what the truth is when there is a lot of misinformation on both sides, every, every side sure. uh, out there. Well, I tell people, don't let anyone set your limitations, especially yourself. Cause I think a lot of people have, have just given up. You look at the anger and hatred in the world. And I think these are people that maybe failed once and gave up. You know, I mean, I'm a 13 year overnight success in Hollywood, you know, so I worked my butt off. I learned very early on by talking to successful people when I was uh, in my college years and just saying, how did you get to where you are? And they would say, oh, I failed and I failed and I kept failing. And that taught me a lot because you learn a lot by failures. But too many people just give up and then they blame God. They blame a God they don't believe in. They blame the world, the government, people. And then they just give up. And then from that, when you have no hope in your life. When you have no drive in your life, you have no self-esteem in your life, um, all you really get out of that is uh, anger. And, you know, we got to pray for these people because people are completely lost. You know, maybe they, the majority of people, I think, in, the, in that world come from broken families. They come from um, just, you know, there's bad things that happen to all of us. We all hit roadblocks. God never promised a perfect life. And people say, well, how can, you know, if there's really God, how can, they, you know, bad things happen to good people? It happens to everybody. Everybody has roadblocks. How do you react to that roadblock? It's so easy to blame everybody else when you got to look in the mirror and say, okay, it happened. What am I going to do about it? And people need to pick themselves up. And a lot of people do, but a lot of people don't. And they get stuck in that black hole that they live in. And they just go after people like you and me on the internet because they're very brave by themselves in their mom's basement when they're 35 years old. But they got to find a place to get their anger up. But all it does is make them more angry. Mm -hmm. And I think if they just took the time to really, you know, if they're not going to read the Bible, at least at least speak to people that have a more a more open, you know, sport, you know, view. I think of what's going on in the world right now, and get a little more educated, and get past the ignorance and and the hatred. And uh, I think that it would could save a lot of people's lives. And I think the movies I do have proven that. I get people stop me all the time. It used to be because of my series Hercules or Andromeda. People stop me all the time now at hotels and airports saying, we love what you do. Please keep making more movies that are, are motivational and, and have faith and love and laughter and redemption. And that's pretty much what I've been doing the last 12 years. But I, I want to do more movies that uh, like Green Book or, or Blindside, movies that will reach out to everybody because nobody likes being preached to and said, you got you better believe. But if, as long as you do movies that have a positive message in there, the message still gets in. Right? Well, I just can't thank you enough for your time uh, today. We wish you all the best and what's what's to come. Uh, I thank think you. it's pretty evident where your heart is and where, you know, the message that you're trying to get across. And I feel like we need more like you. So thank you so much. And I look forward to talking with you again soon about these other projects as well. Again, Left Behind Rise of the Antichrist is in theaters January 26th. Now to a film you can watch today that was just released on Pure Flix. It is a movie that will surely strengthen your family's faith. The film is called The Most Reluctant Convert, The Untold Story of C.S. Lewis. 
Actor Max McLean plays an older C.S. Lewis in the film and shares with me what he has learned by studying the life and legacy of one of the most influential Christian authors and apologists. But first, a quick look at the film. I never cared for my name, Clive Staples. The world came to know me as C.S. Lewis. Perhaps you read my books. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is the most famous, but there's one story that's not so well known. It's my story. At 14, I ceased to be a Christian. Your mother loves you very much. <laughs> Either there's no God behind the universe, a God indifferent to good and evil, or worse, an evil God. How could a mere man be called a great moral teacher and say the sort of things Jesus said? That night, as I read Fantastes, my imagination was baptized. The rest of me took a little longer. Well, Max McLean, such an honor to get to uh, chat with you today. How are you? Very well, thank you. Oh, I'm excited uh, that this movie uh, is, again, we were talking before we got started, kind of getting a rebirth now that it's on Pure Flix. It's one that I think is still so relevant today. I think he had struggles um, you know, C.S. Lewis did with his family, and I think with coming to 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 grasp of really believing in God and what that means, that I think you know on a daily basis people still struggle with today. I would imagine that's what uh, you know you believe as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're right, uh, and the movie covers that. Uh, the movie is a, is an older Lewis living in his memories, recounting his conversion from hard-boiled atheist, uh, vigorous debunker of Christianity, to, as he says, the most reluctant convert in all England. And so in recounting that journey, uh, you know, he, we, have, uh, we have three actors playing Lewis, Lewis is a young boy, Lewis is a young man, and then the older Lewis looking back on his life. And as a young boy, he lost his mother to cancer at... Uh, roughly eight years old. She was the rock of the family, the, you know, the, 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 the central anchor. Uh, and uh, that left him with, uh, with his father, who he had a terrible relationship with his father. So he kind of became a bit orphaned in a way. Uh, he went off to war, the Great War, World War I, saw the butchery of trench warfare. Uh, he said... Uh, where he said, uh, uh, all these wounded men moving about like crushed beetles, mm. uh, just the, the, the insanity of trench warfare. And he came to the conclusion, either there's no God behind the universe, a God who's indifferent to good and evil, or worse, an evil God. Mm. And that was his starting point. And I think uh, a lot of people who've experienced suffering have similar starting points. What yeah. has uh, the story of C.S. Lewis, and I know you're a big fan of his work and has studied, you know, uh, him and his life and his works uh, for quite some time. But what has his life taught you kind of personally about your walk with the Lord and with Jesus and uh, maybe what others can gain from it as well? Yeah, that's such a good question. Uh, he was so thoroughly converted. He was a very proud man. And his conversion certainly humbled him. Uh, he would, but you know, one of the things was he was a man of his word, and uh, and so he recognized his duty before Christ uh, in terms of treating other people well, uh, being generous, uh, taking up your cross and following Him. He recognized that as you know, counting the cost mm. of being a Christian. Uh, he recognized that if Christianity is true, that it it, uh, it, it bears responsibility uh, for one to be an ambassador of that truth. Uh, and then what was really interesting uh, for me is he uh, he, 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 he was very uh, uh, mathematical, I suppose, that's where it comes to mind, uh, in terms of, of presenting Christianity. He was very concerned when 
Christian has presented because it's comforting or good for society or something like that. He felt Christianity needed to be presented simply and solely because it is true. And he says, if it's not true, then no honest person will want to believe it. If, if it is true, every honest person wants to believe it. And so that makes you go back to Jesus. You know, is he who he says he is? And, and, and his close study of Jesus, you know, he came to the conclusion that if Jesus' statements are false, you know, he said some outrageous things. You know, before Abraham was, I am, uh, I'm, I'm the anointed one, uh, the, the son of the uncreated most high God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and you will see me at the end, you'll see me again at the end of history to judge the universe. I mean, uh, if his statements are false, you know, he's a lunatic. There's, uh, uh, you know, it's of no importance. You just dismiss him out of hand as a, as he says, uh, he's he's nothing more than a, a a crazed man who who makes pronouncements like I am a poached egg. Uh, or if his statements are true, then it's of ultimate importance. It's the most important thing. And so he puts that before us, puts that in front of us. And so an honest honest person will have to wrestle with that. A person that is dismissive it says well it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh it doesn't impact my life uh that person is not being quite honest because uh, the last i checked the death rate is still one to one mm. uh and everybody is going to have to face their maker so it really behooves people you know you can keep things out of your mind if you want to but ultimately, and then you notice this, you know, whenever there's any kind of of catastrophic event, we immediately go for help. We go for help beyond ourselves. And that's what uh, that's what Christianity is is uh, is there for. Uh, you know, to to remind us that we're we're sinners. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Jesus lived the life we should have lived and died the death we should have died. Uh, and, and Lewis brings us to the point of that. And I think that's so critical for us to be reminded of. And finally, a film based on a true story that is surely to be a lesson for all of us, no matter your age. 5,000 Blankets is based on the true story of a mother who found herself having to search the streets and homeless camps along with her eight-year-old son looking for her husband after he suffered a mental crisis. But when they returned home, Cindy's young son was inspired to spread comfort for those who were alone and suffering in their city. The film debuted in theaters a couple of months ago, but now 5,000 Blankets is available to watch on Pure Flix. Take a look at the film before my conversation with Cindy. Look! Yeah, buddy, there you go. Hey, ah, ah. Well, that one got away. He's here, guys. He's here. But your mom got up her sleeve. Nothing. Sure he's here. I think so. He should be here any minute. <laughs> oh, surprise! A few years back, we all head up to Great Bear Lake in Canada for a nice little guy's camping. Are you all right? It's happening again, isn't it? It's fine. Huh? He said he'd be here. I'm sure there was an emergency at work or something. I'll be right there. He's been doing really good for a really long time. I called Dr. Bartley. Then we're seeing him first thing tomorrow morning, and we'll just take it from there. Bobby! You said he left of his own volition. Can't be listed as a missing person yet. My husband is not well. I know you miss him very much, and I know that wherever he is, he misses you. I can't help that he's sick. We didn't ask for any of this, but we get to choose how we react to it. Grandma! There's strength to be found in others in their faith. It can help you find purpose are you hungry what do you think i know there's a lot of holes to hide in in this city the lady that i met tonight i gave her your blanket i wish we could give them all blankets there are over five thousand homeless souls in this city alone so it is philip's wish to reach each and every one of them with a comforting gesture, a blanket. You're a celebrity. Whoa! <laughs> a 
Let's help get these people warm. And we have to believe we can make a change, no matter how small. You stop believing in that, you stop living. So how has these last couple of months been? Because obviously the film first went to theaters. Uh, so mm -hmm. you got to see it there first. And now it's kind of on the smaller screen, I think, for more people to hear about this. Of course, this uh, story is in Texas, but now it's, uh, you know, continuing to to get on a bigger scale, a more national scale, if, if I can even say global as well. Yeah. How has all of this been processing? Uh, because I know it's also a sensitive uh, situation still for your family. Busy. And just sometimes overwhelming, sometimes kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah. Because you just want to do so much to help, and there's only so much one person can do. So that's why I feel like this film is so important to get it across and for people to see it on Pureflix. Because um, it, it's especially children. Like, it gives our children a sense of compassion. I think this film, in all honesty, should be shown in schools. You know, I think so many times we have this idea or this vision where we think our life is going to be headed and where we think, you know, what our family life is going to look like down the road. And I'm sure you never pictured this uh, for your family. What mm -hmm. has God taught you along this when you look back at, at kind of all of this? And again, you're still walking through some of it, but what are some of the lessons that you think God has taught you? Bobby, oh, that things mean nothing. Like we had this huge house. I mean, we were living the American dream, perfect family, you know, the white picket fence, all of that. And overnight it was just all gone. And, you know, it, it taught, I don't miss those things. It's really crazy, but I don't miss any of that. I don't miss the big house and the nice cars. And I think more for me, it's about, I learned passion. Our pain actually brings you to your biggest passion mm. in life. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does. So, yes. Now God can use that. And what do you want families to take away from this and, and other believers and maybe even non-believers as well? You know, I think there's an opportunity to, to see how you have handled this situation. What would you want them to know and, and kind of the message they, they get from this? The message I would say is to... Just have more compassion for your neighbors. That could be your unsheltered neighbors, your neighbor next door, your just people in general. That's what Jesus did. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Good News on Entertainment on your Christian television network. I look forward to seeing you again soon.